Hello everybody, my name is Bash Harry and this is the Harry Knit. We do a lot of knitting content, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested, please subscribe. And this is podcast episode number nine, I think. Wow, we've done about nine months worth of podcasts, which is wild to me. Um, and we're in the new studio. We're still cleaning up admittedly there's a lot more stuff in this corner that you can't see so the filling position is a little bit different than what it's going to be so keep that in mind for the next few videos it's gonna look like this because my room is currently being renovated which means the contractors are removing some stuff repainting um, covering up a window that's been leaking so that room is not going to be in commission for a while and i only had about maybe two days two and a half days to take out all my clothes take out all my stuff and place it here in the studio or put it in my sister's room she hates it she doesn't like it at all we've been sleeping on the same bed and i am very spoiled i do not like sleeping in rooms beside other people. I haven't done that in years and I'd, I'd rather keep it that way. I miss sleeping in my own bed. Um, but that's a little bit of a tangent that's been going on this past month. It's been quite busy, not a lot of knitting, not that I can remember to be honest. It was There was a bit of knitting but I ended up starting projects, not liking it, frogging it and doing another project all over again just so I could be a bit more happy with the way that the patterns look. So we only have like maybe one or two FOs I want to talk about. We have quite a few whips and a very special yarn acquisition. Um, I didn't buy any yarn today or this month but we did get some in the mail by a very lovely lady from the US and we're going to talk about it later on but I hope you have your coffee this is my second one I drink too much coffee in the morning but always before two or else I can't sleep but lately I haven't been able to sleep because of the room renovations hopefully it will be done sooner than later which is the plan but it kind of makes me realize how expensive it is. I budgeted accordingly. I budgeted an amount and I definitely know I'm going to go overboard on that amount so I have to save a little bit more money which means I'm probably going to not buy as much yarn as I thought I would for my birthday. So much tangents, adulthood, why is this happening? Uh, there was nothing particularly wrong with the room. I just wanted to change. It was very dark and high contrast and I didn't really like that, it didn't really fit my personality and I wanted to save money over the past three years to make the room what I felt spoke to me. Kind of in the same way that I have been updating this room which was the guest bedroom to turn into a studio slash work room for me and my sisters and you know what I think it's pretty all right. We only really paid a contractor to remove the bed and we bought a shelf like this shelf the one that stored all my yarn um but everything else apart from the mirror and the tables was probably under 500 which is decent um we didn't it was very minimalist we didn't change the carpet but we used my old carpet from my room just to <laughs> kind of cover up the red and kind of give this room a little bit more um, stuff, you know, to kind of limit the echo that can happen when a room is so bare. But yeah, that's a little bit of a tangent for you. How are you? I hope you're well. I hope summer has been good. I know that the UK and the US right now is experiencing a heat wave, so make sure you have lots of water. I hope you have a fan. <laughs> And I hope you're doing well. Wear all the nice summer clothes, very limited yarn. I get it. I, I wouldn't want to knit in summertime uh, in the UK. It was very dry from what I can remember. <laughs> anyway, 
I guess we're going to start with the FOs that I did. And I didn't do many FOs this month. I did one and I started it in June and I finished it. And I have not weaved in the ends yet. I have not weaved in the ends. I really need to spend some time today to finish this and weave in the ends. But it is a good tank by Are You Knitting Me? Look at that. This is the front because this is where the busts are. It's so white and with the lighting, you can't really see it, but it uses Sheep Just Sheep's Katona um, in the color white, it's bridal white. Initially, I was using this yarn to knit up the So Summer shirt last year, but it was too big, did not like it. And so I frogged it and I just never ended up using the yarn until now because I got really into knitting um, tank tops and vests to wear at home. And one of the things that I was looking at my wardrobe and thinking, okay, what do I need um, in my space or in my closet was I was missing a good high quality top. And I wanted one that was sleeveless. I wanted something easy and breezy. And I was searching all over Ravelry for it. But then I remembered, I follow her on Instagram, Are You Knitting Me just released a good tank pattern. And this one I think is very unique because it uses bust darts. You measure from your under bust. And I, I think I was a 31, but I sized down because that's what's recommended. Plus this is cotton. So I was like, mm, you know, cotton stretch, it, it doesn't stretch. You kind of have to size down when it comes to cottons. So I ended up knitting this and then adding additional bust darts because I was actually pretty curious on how to make bust darts. It's something that I want to try out and it does help a pattern be a bit more size inclusive. She has patterns, the pattern, a good tank, I think is up to a 62 bust or a 52, 60 inch under bust. I have to double check. But I wanted to see how the bust looks like. I wanted to see how it looked on my body. I was really worried. <laughs> and so far it's been really, really good. I did the straps. I basically followed the pattern how it did and I started everything the way that she recommended. It was a very easy, cohesive pattern to read. I did the edge a little differently, as you can see. So I ended up doing, I didn't even do a provisional cast on. I was too lazy to do it. So I ended up doing a normal long tail cast on, knit it an inch, purl, knit another inch, and then I folded it. So you can see that there's like a big bump because I didn't do the provisional cast on correctly. But I kind of like it. It gives the the top a little bit more oomph, a little bit more like character. <laughs> I also did the cast on, it was my first time doing the Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off for the back. And it is surprisingly stretchy. I can't wait to weave this together and finally try it on. I probably won't post it because it's not like sleeveless, it's sleeveless and I prefer posting um, my clothes with sleeves on, just a personal preference. But if you do see me, I'll probably be wearing this with a very light cardigan. I wanted something that was, you. I wanted something that was like a little difficult in the detailing. That's why I wanted something with a bust, but it is really cute. And yeah, I like it a lot. It's a little similar to the Vegas top that I saw High Fiber Knits make a while back. Like I fell in love with it, it was just so beautiful. But it used DK and I wanted to use this yarn so badly because it's been in my stash for such a long time. It's not even mine, it's my mom's, but I stole it to make for the So Summer shirt and then I ended up not liking it. And so it's been in my yarn stash for a long time now. But I finally made it. The one thing I'd say is that I would try to do a finishing on the arm here and then here as well because the finish it's stockinette so it curls 
and that's how the finish looks like on the top which it looks good on this it looks really small but i promise you it stretches it's negative ease yeah it curls a little bit and i'm somebody who prefers um pieces that don't curl maybe i would add an i-cord edge or like a single crochet edge but i don't have any more yarn of the sheep sheep just sheep's katona i'm just gonna constantly call it something that isn't um but yeah this is the only fo that i finished this month no it's not the only fo it's the only finished garment that i finished this month and I can't wait to block it and see how it finally looks because life has been pretty busy, admittedly, so I had not the time to really sit down and seam and make sure everything looks nice and pretty. But that is my first FO of the month. The second FO that I want to talk about is this bandana. Ta-da! I actually made two and I actually finished it in like a day. Each bandana took me about a day to do. I made this while I was filming. I was doing a video with Portia Brunei and while we were in the car waiting for the cameras to not heat up because that happens when the day is so hot the camera can overheat and you have to take some time to make sure it's turned off, cool it down. And so while I was waiting for the car the camera to stop overheating when I was just sitting in the car. Uh, the Taycan, so expensive, so fast, absolutely terrifying. I decided to knit up a bandana because earlier that morning I was watching YouTube videos, I was watching High Fiber Knits and I saw that she made a bandana because she's going to Mexico on holiday and she was like, oh this is really nice, you know, keep the sand out of your hair and I was like, oh my god, why don't I knit a bandana too? <laughs> she does hers a little differently. Uh, she goes into short rows and the construction a bit more on her podcast. I wanted something a little bit more simple, something that was easy to follow along and something that was pretty mindless. So this was the first one that I made. This one's also using Sheep's Katona. Uh, it's all the leftovers from this project. And I don't have any more. This took up the whole thing. This is very simple and it's not even blocked yet. For this one, which was the trial, it's a basic seed stitch pattern for the edge. And then I did yarn overs and then basic stockinette. And then once there wasn't any more yarn, I decided to bind off normally. And then I did some... Give me a second. Oh, I can't open it. I'm too lazy to do it, never mind. Then I did basic crochet chain right here at the edges, and then I thought it curled a little bit too much, so I added a single crochet edge right here, but it didn't really work, it still curled up. So I'm hoping once I block it, it will look really, really nice. And then I still got really into it, so I decided to make another one. This one uses sheeps as well, but in the blue, and I think this is the blue that I used for my Hello from My Colors Crop by Jessie Mae, which is that one, um, that top right there. And I just used the leftover yarns from that, and I had significantly more. And this one, let me just take it off. This one also has a seed stitch all over, but then I also did some yarn overs. And then, uh, seed stitch before binding it off so it didn't curl as much and then instead of a chain i wanted something a bit more stronger so i made an i-cord edge instead so this is what it should look like it's very cute and it doesn't have any short rows so this kind of looks a little bit like a cup it kind of curls in on itself but I really like it. I think it's really cute. And then it's super easy to put on and put take off. I literally just adjust it there. Take it. I usually tie my hair for this. But I take it, take the two ties, tie it, double knot it, or even just make a bow. 
and it's done. That is all I have to do. And because I just am basic, I like to take off my little ends right there. And it's a look. It's very country <laughs> farm girl look. Yes. I've worn this out. I went out to an event with this and I got a lot of compliments, which is always quite nice. Um, I might make a tutorial out of this. I don't know if anyone wants to watch that though. If you do, let me know. That'll be great. Um, Cause I'm a slave to the algorithm. But if you are interested in maybe a free pattern, I'll probably write one up. I've actually already written one up. I just have to film the video and post it and probably block this so I have better photos. And then it'll be all good to go. Nice. There's definitely a lot of um, patterns available on Ravelry. They're very easy. And, you know, I just did my own interpretation of what I wanted a bandana to look like. Because some of them are... Most of them ones I found were for crochet bandanas and yeah I can crochet I know how to crochet but you know my love is knitting I much prefer knitting and that is what I did before I forget I started from this tail so we just did the increases I kind of look like a dwarf we did the increases we started with here and then we just did the increases up until I felt comfortable and it could wrap around my head and then cast it off made the eye cords and then done it didn't take me long i think it took me like one afternoon to make this and that was only in between the days i was like going out seeing my nini seeing everybody going to work all that stuff it took me maybe an afternoon and so if you wanted to make one for yourself or for your friends this is a very easy project to do especially for the summertime i feel like this is a really great summer design <laughs> If you're not interested in like headbands, this one's really cute and it gives very animal crossing vibes Very vintage very cute, but yeah Those are the only three FOs that I made this month Which is not a lot and that was because I kept restarting redoing so many different um, patterns for myself that I ended up not liking and then I frogged it, and then I got really sad, and then I just... Ugh, trying to make patterns is very weird as a beginner because you're so used to being your own critic, I guess, and you're thinking so much about is this something someone's actually wanting to make? Is it something that you want to do? And I get a lot of ideas in my head, so I start a lot of them, and I stop doing them, and I start again, and I stop again. And I think I did that at least two or three different times of two different patterns. So it's not the greatest thing to do, not gonna lie. I really should just hammer in and focus on one idea like I did with the Awan vest. But I didn't, and that's fine. That's completely fine. I'm still slowly getting into it. I don't want to overwhelm myself, so I'm just taking it easy however I can. But that being said, I want to talk to you about a project that I'm currently making. It's a whip. I just posted it on the Instagram like yesterday. And this one is a vest. Oof. Oh, the yarn. I don't know what to call it yet, but I decided to make a top down sweater. Can you see it? Yes, you can. Can you see it? Yes, you can. Ta da! It is so big. My gauge swatch was way off. I did a gauge swatch um, and it ended up being a little too big for my body. I decided to stop on the sleeves. No, I decided to stop on the body and just work on the sleeve while I think about the pattern. Because initially this sweater is supposed to be this oversized fall piece that you wear on like the days where you don't want to do anything, you just want to cuddle up in your room, you want to knit or you want to watch TV. That was the intention of this piece. I wanted something that was um, something you can work on while you're watching TV, something that was mindless while still being a top-down sweater. But as you can tell, it is 
so, so big. And I think it's because my gauge swatch was off by a few, um, by a few rolls. This is Drops Melody. You saw it in my last video, I was making a swatch. And I think the swatch was off by like 1.5. And that doesn't sound like a big deal. But then when you're knitting it up and you're making a sample, it ended up looking a little too big, in my opinion. So I thought maybe I could turn this into a medium instead of this, or like a size three or four, instead of the size two that I intended to knit up for myself. But then I started on the sleeve and I realized it was a bit too small. Because initially I wanted it to be a bit longer, maybe more oversized. But the sleeve itself is way too small, or at least the armhole depth is way too small for a body like this. And it was also my first time doing short rows. And I got so nervous about doing short rows. I am so confused about short rows to this day. I know what it's supposed to do. It's to give you more rows or increases and makes it look nice but how to calculate them, my brain cannot warp yet. <laughs> and then how to write them down, my brain cannot warp them, blah, blah. My brain cannot like fathom it just yet. But this is what I did. It's supposed to be a drop shoulder because I'm getting really into drop shoulders right now. I like the look, but you can't really see it with this yarn. And I definitely made the neck hole way too big. It's bigger than intended. It was supposed to be like three, four inches. It's a solid five or six and it's way too deep for me personally. So I think it's going back to the drawing board. A part of me is thinking I should switch yarns even though I love the color. I love how fluffy it is but because it's so fluffy I can't really see the stitches. And that's a little bit difficult when you're trying to write up a pattern. So I'm just thinking, like, what other bulky yarns do I have in my stash that I could probably do this and still make a piece that I kind of want to wear? Because um, this was the yarn that I wanted. And it's so fluffy and beautiful. Just look at this texture. Look at the texture. Oh my fucking god, that's a monkey! That's a monkey. Why is there a monkey? Oh, there's two monkeys! Three monkeys! You don't see it. What the fuck? There's a lot of monkeys outside. There's an army of monkeys outside. Listen, I live in Borneo, okay? Um, and I live near a jungle, a forest, and that means I get a lot of monkeys and wild boars occasionally outside my house. It, and, you know, I know some people think they're cute. But when you live here and they eat your trash and they pop out of your window when you're least expecting, it's, it's not a great feeling. You get absolutely scared. Oh god, there was one time a monkey was literally right outside my window and I was doing work and I screamed so hard and it was during a work meeting, no less. I, so my boss heard me screaming as a monkey popped out of my window. That's why I don't open my windows at all because I'm too scared a monkey's gonna come into my room. That's terrifying. And these aren't like the cute monkeys from Friends, you know? These are like actual wild monkeys and they're absolutely terrifying. Ugh. Like that. It all. Where was I going? My, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry about that tangent. I was talking about this. I do like a nice drop shoulder. It's what I'm really really into. My only worry with the top down is that the gauge could be a little off. So I don't know whether or not I'm going to frog this. I might have to and just start all over and maybe pick out a yarn that's less finicky, I'd say. Even though this is like the perfect yarn for a lazy day sweater. Um, but that's just my thoughts right now. I need to figure out what yarn would suit this in my stash because I'm not planning on purchasing any more 
at least until my birthday, but we shall see about that. I do have Drop Sky, and I think Drop Sky would be really cute with this. I'm just worried I might not have enough of that yarn specifically to make a sweater this big. But that is my own challenges that I gotta think about, that I gotta look through and think about. I'm just thinking about the monkeys now. I'm almost done with the sleeve. So I don't know, part of me thinks I should frog it and start all over. Another part of me is thinking maybe I should just finish it, um, do the edits how I can when it comes to the grading, but then the sample wouldn't be as nice or it wouldn't even be as how I intended it to be in the pattern. So lots of thoughts ruminating in my head. Another thing that I've been knitting up, and this has been on my needles for a while, and I still haven't finished the video on it. It is the third sample of the Awan Bess. So if you didn't know, I just released the pattern and it is out now. I'm just finishing up on the YouTube tutorial. I still got to do the ribbing. I still got to do the neckline, but overall it is almost done. I just need to finish this. And I know it's gone. It's not going to take long. I know it's going to take me maybe a day to sit down, knit it, film it, and have it all done. It's just that I have not given myself the time or the opportunity to finish it. And that's what annoys or frustrates me a lot about myself is that I tend to have a lot of work that's very odd hours. Um, or I have meetings and when that meeting happens, I tend to hyper-focus on that to be the main goal of the day and I don't really focus on my other things like my patterns. So I just need to get this done really. It's been on the needles for a while. I think it's been about a month already since I started this and I need to finish it soon just to have the video ready. And I also need to seam everything together and block it and hopefully it'll be done. This one uses Hobby Diablo, the original one and then I held it five strands together. So it's very, very thick. It's very, very cute, the Allen vest. But yeah, so I did one sample with Diablo Multi, the original pink sample. Then I did one with Drops Wish, and that was really nice. And then I'm finally finishing up and doing it with Drops, not Drops, Diablo. Hobby Diablo. <laughs> what is my brain doing today? Yeah, and so many ends to weave in, and it's like my least favorite part when it comes to knitting is the weaving. If I can just not weave anything, I am happy. I am a happy little soldier. I don't want to do that. I like patterns that are like top down in the round or limited seaming just for my own personal preference. If you like it, great, perfect but I am not a seamstress. I am barely a human being. But yeah, those are the two that have been on my needles for my own personal patterns. Then I'm also doing another cardigan. It's my first cardigan ever, but it's my second Lily Kate Makes design. And hopefully I can get it. It is the Awan, it's the Avonham cardigan. And it is the most beautiful, rich yellow you have ever seen. It is beautiful. The color is just... Mwah. I am a very big lover of yellow. I wasn't before. If you asked me in 2017, 2018, I would tell you I hated the color yellow. But now, if you're asking me in 2022, give me all the yellow, give me all the blue, all the orange, you know, give it to me. I love it. It's beautiful. Um, just because it's a color that brings me a lot of joy. I love wearing it. I love playing around with it. I'm very much a sun girl forever and I just wanted a cardigan that brought me that much joy. And one of the patterns that I received from Lily as a thank you for doing the sweater that I did a while back in January was I received the Ribblesdale vest and I got the Avonham cardigan. And I really wanted to try the Avonham cardigan. I'm not gonna lie, it's a very beautiful pattern. 
My one issue is the gauge was really difficult to find because uh, I think it uses 3.25 millimeters on fingering and I didn't have 3.25 so I'm using 3.5 millimeters on this and it was a little difficult to find the exact gauge for that pattern. So I'm actually using West, what's it called? It's a four ply by West Yorkshire Spinners in the color Butterscotch, which is a very apt name for this. And I am just knitting it up in a size two and this is 75% wool, 25% nylon. So my thinking is that once it's done, I can block it and hopefully it'll come out looking nice. The one thing is she has um, these very beautiful like puff sleeves for the cardigan and it is very beautiful, but I don't have a mohair that is close to this color and I want something that's very close to this yellow. So a part of me is thinking I should just keep it at this color and kind of modify it for my own personal taste, but we shall see once that happens. I am doing, I just did the underarm shaping, we're doing this, I'm actually done, I should actually break this off, and then we'll be moving on with the left front shaping, and then start knitting it up. This wasn't actually a very long knit, I'll be honest, it took me maybe about a week, not even a week, maybe three or four days to do this portion and then I did this in two days. Hopefully I'll have it done by next month, but when it comes to patterns and me, I need to like find the time to do each thing. I like organizing when I'm gonna knit this, knit that. This is my work knit. This is my watching TV knit. <laughs> this is my, you know, it's all these things that I really like to organize and think about which might not be the best thing to do because uh, sometimes you do get overwhelmed and you miss things. So I, I have to remember not to do that, but it's just a thought really, isn't it? We're almost done with that. And yeah, those are all three. These are the three whips that are currently on my needles. Um, I don't know if there's like a lot that's been going on with my whips. Like I said, this month has been quite hectic for me in terms of knitting because usually I keep track of what I make, but then it's just like I kept frogging them and restarting it because I didn't like the way it looked. So I started off this month with a lot more whips that I eventually frog. So these are the ones that I still have left. And even then I'm probably going to frog this little guy right here, even though it's such a pretty color. Oh. Just because I, I need to make the sweater with a yarn that I can actually see. So if you guys have any if you have any recommendations on yarn that's similar to this, but a little bit easier to work with, let me know, because that would be great. I need to sit down one of these days and literally just like, plan out what I'm going to do for the month of August because according to my timeline it's a lot it's a lot of work to be done and I just don't know where to start but that being said let's move on to the yarn acquisitions so as I mentioned I don't have any purchases I made um, this month but I did get some yarn in the mail me and Lavender Fiber Co Amanda uh, she was like, give me your address, your US address, because I do have one to ship stuff with. Um, and so she shipped me some yarn to use in a sweater. And it's the most beautiful thing. It just came like two days ago. Sorry, I smelled it. it smells so nice. It is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. And... I've seen many beautiful yarns and this is so gorgeous. This is her Squishy DK in the color Nuri. 100% Superwash Merino, four ply yarn, 231, no, 231 yards per 100 grams. And it looks like this. Oh, I wish you could see the color. It's so pretty, but so blown out. Can you see it here? 
Okay, this might be better. So, I don't want to open it, but it's just the most beautiful color. It's this very pastel colorway. You've got the pinks and the yellows and the blues and the greens. It's the color of the rainbow in pastels. And I have quite a few yarns like this, but never in this kind of base. And I love merino. I do love working with merino. It's such a soft wool. And I've got three that were sent to me, so thank you. Uh, I'm very excited to see what I can make with this. I have some ideas on like a sweater. It's always a sweater. But I'm thinking of making a vest with this, maybe a different kind of vest, which would be so cute with the colors. I can't wait to knit up a swatch with these colors. Please check out her store. She's like the sweetest lady ever and her daughters are so cute. I did not realize that Maddie Made Crafts was her daughter until very recently. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I should have known, I should have put the two and two together. But yeah, this one is in the color Nuri, but I do know she has quite a few more colors in her shop, so please check it out. I'll have it linked in the description. It came like two days ago with FedEx. And I was so excited. I did a little unboxing for the stories. And my mom was like, wow, so beautiful. And it came with like a lavender bag too. So it's like in the, sh in the stash, just hiding somewhere to avoid um, cockroaches and other bugs that might get into my yarn. So I'm very happy about that, very excited. And yeah. I think that's all I wanted to talk about today. I'm sorry if this video was a little all over the place. I'm sorry if you saw me get spooked by the monkeys. Um, monkeys doing the monkey thing. It's not great, but you know, when you live in this country for a long time, it's something you get used to. It's just what it is. But that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. There will be more podcasts and other things to come. And if you did like this video, you can like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be back next week with another video, and I will see you guys later. Love you. Do I love you? I do love you. All right. Bye.